episode of Aftershocks on AftershocksPodcast.com. And joining us today on the podcast, we're talking to Mr. David Kaiser from Blood Blast Distribution, the first worldwide digital distributor for extreme music. Dave, thanks so much for coming on. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having me on your podcast, man. It's a yeah. pleasure. Absolutely, man. Thanks for coming. Uh, so first off, I mean, congrats on the launch of Blood Blast that opened its doors earlier this year. Um, you know, many, I know metal artists and labels, you know, are obviously real excited to have a genre specialized digital distributor like Blood Blast. And I think that it's, to be honest with you, I think it's kind of long overdue, you know, and uh, it's, you know, it's great that you guys are, are the first one to do it for extreme music uh, with, you know, rock and metal. Um, first off, so why don't you just go ahead, tell the listeners a bit about yourself in terms of your career in the music business and how did the idea for Blood Blast come to fruition and wind up becoming the first global digital distributor for extreme rock and metal? Sure, man. Um, so I started in the music business as a, like, as a working student in, okay. in Hamburg, um, working for a PR agency and uh, for a management company and later on also worked briefly for uh, the rock department of Warner Music as an intern. Um, and after my studies, I became self-employed, worked closely with a PR agency in Hamburg. Um, and did PR for releases like Mastodon, uh, Motionless and White, um, stuff like all the stuff from, from smaller releases like uh, independent labels from SWAT Records, for example, as well. Um, and then one day that uh, job description came up uh, online that Believe was searching for an arts relationship manager for uh, metal, hard rock, and punk. And I decided, yeah, why not give it a shot? Um, at that time, I didn't know there was something brewing like Blood Plus Distribution. It just was like, hey, digital distribution, searching for an arts relationship manager for the heavy genre of music was totally exciting for me at that time because, like you said, long overdue to have more dedication on digital uh, in, in our heavy side of music. Mm -hmm. um, and then the whole idea of Blood Plus Distribution was brought up and um, I was totally in 1,000%. And... Um, like you said, it came from being long overdue. Also, metal is the most growing uh, genre of music and streaming platforms because everyone is now slightly getting there, uh, using their Amazon Prime, for example, for streaming now or uh, having their Alexas at home streaming music, uh, using Spotify more and more. Um, mm -hmm. The freemium users are turning into premium users. And um, yeah. So we wanted to be there right from the start. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's a great uh, thing you guys are doing. You know, and, and I know one of the great things about Blood Blast, from what I read, is that the bands will receive support from the Nuclear Blast a and team. You know, and obviously people yeah. know, you know, Nuclear Blast is, is pretty much the biggest metal label on the globe. Um, and even here in the U.S., I know, uh, you know, obviously they have one of the best a and reps, you know, Monty Connor, who obviously yeah. is... Is one of the all-time best in metal, and of course, there's just so many great in our reps in Nuclear Blast in general. I mean, so since record labels, you know, they no longer really have or promote artist development like they used to. I mean, gone are the days where a band gets a three-album deal to grow and develop as artists. Is Blood Blast also a way for Nuclear Blast to sort of recruit and nurture up-and-coming musicians and bands without having to really invest much, you know, capital into them? Is this sort of like the new way? A label like Nuclear Bliss can still pretty much develop, you know, artists without having to wait a few records to see if a band really can reach its potential or not. Um, it goes both sides, man. Um, the thing is, of okay. course, like since working closely with the whole Nuclear Blast team, like the bands we uh, put in our distribution roster uh, have that advantage of getting feedback um, mm -hmm. and also like feedback from Monty Connor or so something like that. Uh, sure. which is, you can't, like, put a price tag on that, basically, which is... No, you can't. <laughs> I know. So, um, <laughs> totally. And, uh, of course, if there's a band that's really putting in the work, because nowadays a band has to take even more responsibilities than they used to, mm -hmm. it's not enough to put on a great show anymore and, and, like, be a great live band. You need to be out there on the digital platforms, on the socials, and, and show that you're dedicated to work. Mm -hmm. Um... And of course, in the best case scenario, a band starts out at Blood Bus Distribution. Uh, we discuss the band with the A&R team at Nuclear Blast and um, they get offered a deal, oh, okay. like an upsell yeah. deal. But on the other hand, of course, if a band wants to stay completely independent, um, we can do that any day. So Okay, sure. 
is um you know I, I think too you know one of um one of the best you know attributes to having a genre you know specialized digital uh, distribution is that it allows traditional independent record labels to sort of focus their resources and energy on the physical product and eliminates sort of the headaches and challenges of having a market you know yeah. uh, to the digital audience so currently i know blood blast has a partnership i know just you know firsthand you know obviously uh with uh how we got connected uh, through mario at upstate records yeah. out of new york um so in terms of working with record labels are there specific you know so for, you know bands that you will distribute from a given label or do you work with every release that the, the label puts out how does that uh, work we labels? we work um of course, we're giving the advice on the release schedules in terms of looking from the digital perspective, like on every release. Um, mm -hmm. And like you said, giving more power to the to the label to focus on the on the physical side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to work every release. Like if there's, uh, of course, a release plan that can't be changed, if we say we maybe should do this differently on digital, then that's that happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, we work it like we would work with the artist directly. Okay. So, okay. and totally. we also have cases with like, for example, uh, Nexion, an Icelandic black metal band, who's also signed to an Italian uh, label and mm -hmm. they decided to give the digital to the band. So someone else could focus 100% on that. So they can do a uh, even better job on the physical side of things and they do a great job. So. Sure. That's the best case scenario, in my opinion, for for an up and coming band or for a new band to have a really dedicated independent label that's taking care of, of the physical and of the physical product that we all love mm -hmm. and uh, take the responsibility in their own hands on the digital side of things. Because in the end, the band always has to do the stuff on their own in on all the channels, mm -hmm. get the direct connection to the fans and everything. Mm -hmm. um, it just helps them immensely. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, here in, in uh, the U.S., David, I mean, I just read the other day that, you know, eighty I think it's about 85% of music played today, it's through streaming. Um, yeah. So, I mean, um, obviously, you know, I mean, I, I still personally collect vinyl, but I do stream a lot more so than I used to. Um, however, I still, I hear many, a lot of artists that still claim that CDs still sell but to me, I, I haven't seen that just personally. But, you know, for what I'm seeing, most independent labels, they're starting to sign artists to deals that include the streaming and releasing of limited edition vinyl, since vinyl seems to be you know, obviously selling better than any other form of a f physical music product. Let me just tap into your, you know, expertise and get your opinion on what you're seeing right now in terms of buyer behavior and physical products, you know, on a global scale. I mean, do you think physical mu musical products, do you think they will – at any time maybe cease to exist in the future or would there always be you think a significant number of fans who prefer vinyl or cd over streaming um for our heavy genre there will still be a dedicated fan base who's buying vinyl and mm. uh, as long as artists and labels offer a great product then it will be bought um but it's not more like uh, like you you buy a cd to have the music it's more like you buy an additional merchandise item that's having the music on it. That's mm -hmm. why we see uh, such a growth in, in vinyl, and it's staying that on a steady, on a steady growth and on a steady number, because mm -hmm. fans sometimes even buy vinyl even if they don't have a record player because they just want to have that colored mm -hmm. vinyl, that gatefold, the lyric sheet, and everything. So, mm -hmm. um, and I was just chatting uh, with a friend of mine the other day. Uh, who's selling cars actually and then we realized there's maybe something also like a, a connection between streaming increase and cars not having cd players anymore as well so sure yes mm -hmm. because you connect with your mobile phone and stream on spotify in the car and everything bluetooth mm -hmm. usb connection everywhere um so uh there was a like all of the sounds like yeah sure like my car doesn't have a CD player either, mm -hmm. or if I if I rent a car, there's no CD player in there ninety nine percent of the times. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and, and you're totally right because I mean, just uh, speaking for myself personally, I used to still buy CDs up until a few years ago when I bought a new car, and it didn't have a CD player. And it's really since then where I've really you know I, I've gone more head on with streaming. 
uh, than I previously did because it's just like I said. I mean, even computers these days, you know, they're not putting, uh, you know, uh, you can't play CDs in them, the, the brand new Macs yeah. or whatever. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, yeah, it's it's sort of getting phased out, you know, maybe unintentionally, but um, it just strikes me as kind of interesting because yeah, I don't know where people will play CDs unless they have their, you know. Uh, still have their device at home that they use for it, which you know most people don't. Yeah. Maybe, maybe go on to, their you know? Xbox or on their PlayStation for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> totally. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it would stay as a as a merch item. I think the first item to go will be the jewel case CD. Okay. And then you will still have like limited digipacks, maybe, but heavy on vinyl, and uh, people will stream. Okay. Yeah. So it's more, coming down more. to pretty much vinyl and streaming right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I figured. So, you know, I know um, with Blood Blast, I know uh, it, the creation of it became between Nuclear Blast and Believe Digital. And uh, and I know Believe Digital, they also own a, ma- you know, they own a majority stake in, in Nuclear Blast. And they yeah. also own one, I believe, a large portion of one of the top independent labels in France as well. Do you think we're seeing a new pattern in terms of, having these bigger independent labels now merging with the digital distributors, I believe. And do you think we're going to see more like genre specialized distributors like Blood Blast in the future? You think that's where we're going? Um, in terms of what's what's good for our heavy music, I, I hope mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. like that will happen, like not, uh, not wishing for it to happen. Sure. Mm-hmm. But um, I hope that digital distributors get more and more involved with with the heavy metal scene and like the labels mm-hmm. and put some more uh, work and dedication into that like believe is doing now with uh, nuclear blast and uh, also founding the, the blood blast distribution uh, mm-hmm. setup um but yeah that's that's definitely e- to happen in the future in some way or another because heavy metal labels see that there is a demand in streaming and that some work needs to be put in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I I totally agree with you. Do you? Um, so, what does it take now for an artist or a band to get on Blood Blast? I mean, is there a requirement or criteria that a band needs to meet in order to be considered for distribution from Blood Blast? Uh, it sounds cheesy, but um, at first they got to have a certain level of dedication, and uh, sure. the music has to be good. But mm-hmm. um, we can take much higher risks than a classic label, for example, in signing mm. an artist to our distribution service, because we don't have to fear to have physical stock laying around in a warehouse and collecting dust, basically. Sure, yeah. So we, if we sign an artist or uh, an artist sends a submission on, on our website, bloodblast.com, mm-hmm. um, we listen to the music, we check out their socials, we check out how active they are. Okay. Um, but even if they haven't released anything on streaming yet, and if there's a a great record coming out, um, mm. that's not a deal breaker at all. So oh, okay, then we were dedicated to work with them, regardless if they are as well. Oh, okay. Oh, so, that's that's really cool. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, as, as I mentioned before, you know, Nuclear Blast really. I mean, like I said, it's the leading force on the globe for metal. Uh, there's other, of course, great labels out there, but I think none really have the the kind of vision and awareness that Nuclear Blast does, especially when it comes to niche and and genre specialized decisions, as we were talking about. So, for example, I know like with Sharp Tone, you know, those bands and their audience on Sharp Tone, you know, they have obviously there's so many difference between the you know that audience compared to your average, I think, Nuclear Blast consumer uh, in terms of not just the demographics, but in terms of buyer behavior. And, and, you know, the overall, I guess, marketing strategies that are used to promote, you know, their music, uh, you know, just, just very different targets because of the age and a lot of different factors, obviously. But um, how does it work with Blood Bless in terms of how you go about making genre or subgenre based decisions which, within the marketing strategy? Like, for example, um, is like Blood Bless, are you guys more focused on working with younger bands than, say, like, you know, seasoned veteran ones? Um, or are there specific you know, demographics or characteristics that you'll pretty much automatically rule out when you decide to work with a band or not? Is it just sort of, how does that go? Not at all. Like I said, okay. the, um, if I, if I have a veteran band, um, for example, I would count, uh, troops of doom okay. as a veteran band in there. Uh, 
But if I see a band like that putting so much dedication and work in there into their socials and how they how they communicate with the fans online and mm. see that they have to do something, then we won't rule that out at all. Um, okay. Especially since we don't want to just flood the digital distribution services with more and more modern metal. There is a lot sure. of great modern metal and modern music, but still we we want to have the black metal there. We want to have the, the drone. We want to have the doom, the stoner, mm -hmm. like we want to show, we want to push the diversity of our heavy music onto the streaming service, like that it's not only gent and sure the more yeah. more metal kind of thing that's like resonating with the younger audience better, mm -hmm. of course. Sure, but yeah. um, I think you have to deliver something to the platforms in order to get the audience there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, no, that's point. where we're coming from. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. What? What? Um. I mean, what are you seeing right now in terms of bands that are uh, looking uh, to uh, Blood Blast for distribution? Are you seeing? You know, is it more of the, of the the younger bands, more of that type of music, or do you see a lot of veteran artists that want to kind of get in, get involved with you guys as well? Um. It's it's a good mix, of course. Like, there's a the a higher percentage of younger artists that are still mm -hmm. making like the 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 old school kind of metal still as okay. well. Mm -hmm. But um, just from being a digital distribution and, and being out there on, on all the social media platforms, mm -hmm. uh, there's a much higher rate of younger, young bands submitting their, their music to us. Mm -hmm. They're all online all the time, like the veteran sure. bands and, and older bands. Uh, we get the connection through the classic way. Either a management company reaches out to us or... Um, the guys, the A&R guys from Nuclear Blast are connecting us with the bands or the managements that are interested in the whole thing because they read something about it mm -hmm. uh, online. Um, so that's that's the way we get approached normally. Okay. Okay. That sounds so. great. Awesome. Um, and just, you know, I got one last really question for you. I mean, you know, Nuclear Blast obviously wouldn't be what it is without its founder, Marcus Steger. Uh, tell us a bit about your experiences, you know, working alongside him and what are some of the things – that you've kind of learned along the way since being, you know, involved with Nuclear Blast under his tutelage as well. Um, since I just like start, far, um, sorry, joined the company last year in November, um, okay. I didn't have the pleasure to work with Marcus Steiger and getting the experience, like the knowledge from him. Okay. Um, so I can't really tell something about that. So okay. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I mean, he's obviously just such a pivotal, you know, uh, force in what he's done with nuclear blast and i just yeah uh you know like i said he's got the vision uh you know i mean that i think um you know that's needed obviously for for hard rock and metal i think going forward uh no it's great so i guess you know david no thanks so much for coming on and uh you know talking to me about this how can bands and artists look into becoming a part of blood blast i mean where, where can we just to the listeners where can we uh tell everyone they can go to find out more information about uh getting on blood blast Sure. Like for once, there are our socials. You find us on Instagram um, and on, on Facebook, obviously. We're currently building up our YouTube channel as well. Um, to submit your music, just go to bloodblast.com. Then you will find uh, on the right top of the screen, you will find the submission button. Okay. Click there and then you can choose between two forms, one for US-based bands and one for European-based bands. Um, send us as much information as you can. Um, leave nothing unfilled if you can <laughs> and uh, we will check out your submission and then get back to you as soon as we can like mm -hmm. uh, we receive a lot right now so it might take a few days mm -hmm. uh, but we try even if it's taking a little bit longer we try to reach out to everyone um, because even if blood blast might not be the right fit we might find another way to help you somehow and keep an eye on you yeah Fantastic. Well, that's great, David. Well, I mean, like I said, I think what you guys are doing is great. And I look forward to, you know, seeing more uh, bands and, and uh, you know, uh, labels working through Blood Blast. And, you know, thanks again for coming on. I really appreciate it. And, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, uh, it was great talking to you. Thanks for the invite, man. It was really yes. a pleasure. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> thanks so much, David. Thanks for listening to Aftershocks. For more episodes, go to our website at www.aftershockspodcast.com. Visit us on our Facebook Instagram, and Twitter pages for more news and information on the podcast. And be sure to subscribe, listen to, and review all episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all other podcast platforms. 
For your music listening pleasure, visit our website or go to www.shockwavesradio.com for all comments and questions. Please email us at info at aftershockspodcast.com.